You might have a question from this. You might be thinking, it takes time for Spanning Tree to find these loops and handle them. Do we have broadcast storms during this time? That is a good question, but Spanning Tree has a trick for this also. The process of assigning a path cost and port roles happens when the interface first comes online. This could be when powering up a switch, when plugging in a cable, or when we enable a port. When the interface comes online, Spanning Tree goes through a few steps. In the original version of Spanning Tree, these are known as blocking, listening, learning, and forwarding. First, the blocking state. For 20 seconds, the switch will not allow any traffic to pass, other than BPDUs, of course. This gives the switch time to determine if this will be a root port, designated, or remain blocking to prevent loops. If it remains blocking, then it won't transition through the remaining states. Next, the port will spend 15 seconds in the listening state. This is where the port waits to see if the topology is stable. That is, that the interface isn't constantly going up and down. Third, the port enters the learning state, which also lasts 15 seconds. During this time, the switch does what all switches do. It looks at the traffic it receives and uses it to build or update its MAC table. During this time, it still won't be allowed to forward traffic out the interface, other than BPDUs. And finally, the port transitions to the forwarding state. It can now forward normal traffic. So notice that with the original spanning tree, as we've discussed here, it takes about 50 seconds for a port to come online. That is simply not fast enough in a modern network. In the next video, we're going to see how newer versions of Spanning Tree have improved this. And of course, there are two more questions for you to consider. Pause now and have a look at them if you can, or come back later.